so now the question comes so what is a polymer we know that it is a polymer uh, is actually a large molecule we also call it as a macro molecule when compared to our regular molecules say for example in our drugs in our pharmacy which will be having a molecular weight uh, below 500 uh, molecular weight most of the times these polymers are having a higher molecular weight than uh, regular drugs because they are they are composed of repeated structure units and they are we are calling them as a monomers and these monomers are covalently bonded to get a polymer <clears throat> if you see the word derived this is the word which is derived from the uh, greek uh, poly that means it is a many and meros means it is a parts it is containing a many parts so uh, if you see here the example of a polymer is a polyethylene what you are having a plastic bags polyethylene bags and polyvinyl chloride and pipes and tubes it is containing um ethylene groups repeated ethylene is a monomer which is uh, repeatedly which is taking place uh, at a different uh, uh, length depending upon your requirement we are going to have a different chain lengths of these ethylene groups covalently bonded to get a polymer so this is actually called as a polyethylene similarly pvc pipes what you are got uh, instead of uh, material of construction we have seen in uh, pharmaceutical engineering we are using the pvc pipes uh, when compared to your iron pipe because of the corrosion problem we have in the material of selection of plant construction this pvc is made up of vinyl chloride they are getting covalently bonded to get a polymer <coughs> they are complex and the gained molecules are uh, different from the uh, low molecular weight compound that is the reason they are completely their science is different and their technology is particularly different so these are the macro molecules they are made up of a so many monomers these monomers are the smaller molecules now coming to the we know that these polymers which are present we are going to use a, a many number of the polymers one type of uh, polymer is linear polymer <clears throat> in the linear polymer a polymer is uh, uh, the in which the molecules from the long chains without having any branches or cross linked structures it means it is a straight line it is a moving in the covalent bond in the straight line it will be going in the straight without any branch or cross link then we call this as a um, polymer which the polymer is linear in nature example is nylon polyester pvc what we are describing so the nylon and the polyester we are using in the textiles and the cloth and the filter bags where we are going to use pvc which is going to be used in the pipes so these are all the examples of the linear polymers you need to write this in the gpat whenever you <coughs> you have been asked in the question the second type of the polymer is a branched polymer these are all the uh, uh, nomenclature you should know uh, so that it will be getting confused later and how you have got a characteristics of your uh, newtonian flow and non newtonian flow what you have observed in the um, colloidal systems that is in the force dispersion like emulsions and uh, suspensions it is varied from the one polymer to another polymer depending upon what type of the polymer is so in the branched polymer the polymer is containing a chain that has the branch points that connects three or more chain fragments it means like just like a, your uh, tree it has got a main trunk and it has got a side branches the side branches has got a different uh, chain length it will be bared that will be giving as a fibers to the uh, main chain so because of that reason you will be having a scaffold like structure when you are making a deflocculated suspension and you are going to have the similar one when you are going to uh, use they will be entangling with each other and they will not allow the suspension particle to fall down because of these branches and they will be allowing the uh, small particles to be get entrapped in the branches of the polymer so that will be having an advantage to prevent the sedimentation of your suspension at the same time these branches which will enhance the viscosity of the material also so they will prevent the settling for example it is a starch like material which you are having that is having a branches which can be having a uh, advantages of this when you are making it is a the best and you are uh, going to get the again the advantage of this uh, branched polymer because of this branchedness you have got a polyethylene um, uh, 
structures which have got wide varieties of uh, thicknesses and the flexibilities you can add the third type of the polymer is cross linked polymer in the cross linked polymer there are two chains they will be getting cross linked with one bridged another uh, material it means the, uh, in linear chains of two polymers are present like that they are getting interacting with each other then it is called as a cross linked polymer don't get confused with uh, um, your uh, branched polymer with a cross linked polymer most of the cross links are the bonds that link one polymer chain to another polymer say for example if you are having a uh, one polymer with another polymer most of the times we call it as a co polymer so that is actually polymer co polymer linkage it will produce uh, a structure like your ladder there are two uh, ram, uh, bamboo straight it is present the steps will be present joining and making it so this is actually a cross links which will make the polymer further form and increases the viscosity so most of the times uh, the example like a melamine formaldehyde resin uh, this is a linear and branched polymer are known as most of the times uh, they are called as a thermoplastic material whereas a cross linked polymer is known as a thermo setting material because the, because of this crossing you have got a um, advantage is called as a toughness and you are going to use for the different purposes whereas the linear and branch polymer which have got their own advantages and they are having uh, the flexibility and the recyclability because of uh, them uh, they are widely used but both we are going to use in our pharmacy what we have learnt in the uh, engineering we are bridging that particular gap here in the pharmaceutical uh, physical pharmaceutics too and the same thing which you are going to take to the next uh, year that is fifth sem where you are going to use in the nds that is novel drug delivery system in the later on what you are going to get in the formulation development so these uh, polymer uh, has got wide varieties so these three varieties which you have already made we have to classify according to our origin also so if you do the classification of a polymer according to their origin and the properties and characteristics it is divided into the two types one is a natural another one is a synthetic polymer a natural polymer is the one which is having obtained from the source from the nature that is plant and animal and mineral sources um, it is obtained in the nature directly whereas uh, your uh, synthetic polymer they are not available in the nature we are going to prepare in the lab so it is nothing to do with the nature so this is uh, we are uh, seeing <coughs> the difference between these two there is another difference is called as organic polymer and inorganic polymers and uh, the third polymer which you have already seen is uh, a thermoplastic material and uh, we have got a uh, thermosetting material the second classification we have got a organic polymer and inorganic polymer the third one we have already seen the thermoplastic material and thermosetting materials and the third one uh, the fourth one we can call them as a uh, plastics and elastomers and fibers and liquid resins depending upon their consistency and we can use them for the different purposes <clears throat> so the first one is uh, this is you will be asked in the uh, gpat uh, what is the um, uh, Uh, example of a particular polymer or you name this which category which will belong in so natural polymers are like a cotton silk wool and rubber they are obtained obtained from the cotton is from the plant source silk and wool from the animal source and rubber from the again plant source so rubber is a rubber tea which is getting a latex from that we are going to get it it is completely a natural origin we are going to use in our pharmacy for the uh, filter bags we are going to use the uh, rubber ca caps so we are using them as a polymer which is having a you know um, making of a meshes and you are going to make making them as a screens and caps in the case of rubber and gaskets similarly synthetic polymers which are not available at all in the nature we are going to use them in the prepare them in the lab like a polyethylene pvc and nylon so the same thing which you can categorize into the two types one is organic polymer another one is inorganic so in the organic polymer uh, the polymer 
whose back pain uh, chain is essentially made up of carbon atoms it means you any polymer which is having a backup of carbon atoms that is uh, uh, called as a uh, organic polymer example is cellulose proteins and polyethylene and nylon these are all either it is a, a natural or synthetic but it is containing common is a carbon as a common backbone there is a second category in this is inorganic polymer it does not contain any carbon but it is also acting as a polymer example is a glass and silicon rubber so the glass is uh, made up of uh, silicon only you already seen glass made by the limestone and collect and the uh, uh, sand so that sand is nothing but a silicon so this is a silicon polymer so the silicon rubber that resin is also being used in the inorganic category there it does not have any carbon atoms as in the backbone structures there is uh, one what we have already discussed is a thermoplastic material and thermosetic material and these polymers have got their wide varieties and changes in their uh, structures so some polymers are softened on heating they will be getting uh, melted and can be converted into any shape that they can retain on the cooling so the polymers which are uh, softened on heating and can be converted to any shape it means if you are melting them they will be getting liquefied and at the higher temperature when you are cooling them they will be again hardened so they will acquire the shape anything you want to get it so that is their advantages so in the thermoplastic material such material that soften on the heating and stiffen on the cooling they are termed as a thermoplastic polymer example is polyethylene pvc nylon sealing wax these are all the things which you have got in a category where the second uh, one category is they are infusible again once they are get ignited and uh, they are uh, uh, set once they are set they again, you cannot again fuse them and you cannot uh, recycle them so they form the infusible and insoluble mass and upon heating then that polymers they are called as the thermosetting polymers like your epoxy resin silicon resins polyurethane resins and phenolic resins so most of the times we are uh, having this example so these polymers they will be setting once they cannot be recycled and they cannot be again melted this is actually what the differences of this uh, thermo setting polymer is <clears throat> another one is a plastic and elastomer and fibers and liquid resins these are all uh, polymer is shaped into the hard and tough utility articles by the application of the heat and the pressure um by the application of the plastic so you will be having a different uh, uh, textures and the uh, different um, uh, strengths by making a cross linkers and we are going to have some vulcanization by adding a sulfur most of the times which you are using a rubber which is having a sulfur vulcanized by adding a sulfur uh, to get a good strength and the elongation properties uh, the polymers used in that particular is elastomer that is called as a rubber natural rubber so in this particular one we are having a different characteristics of flexibility by adding the vulcanization or any another components like a plasticizers you are adding a fibers and liquid resins you are going to uh, different bending capacities and different uh, flexibility so that you will be having a advantages to gain a uh, different polymer uh, uh, utilities because of the reason you have got this wide polymers which we are using one is for the um use of your packaging in the packaging what you are going to use is for the bottles and the lids where you are going to use and uh, is uh, uh, maybe strips where you are going to use the plastic strips and that is blister packing and also in the polymers which you are going to be used in the doses form like emulsions and suspensions or suspending agents and butter binding agents we are going to use them as a polymers so it is uh, used in the construction also in the pipes and the pillars and the coatings this epoxy resin coatings onto the floor these are all used in the construction also it means our material of uh, formulation formulation building and we are also using and uh, in entire packaging of our formulations we are using it, it is uh, what to note down that is the reason i thought that i will fill this gap also so that we will be having an understanding and uh, Uh, nature and uh, terminology of this so that you will not be having any gap in the subsequent years 
now how these polymers are made and how the what the technology is involved in in this particular one when we have seen the science behind that whether it is a cross linked and whether it is a branched or it is a linear we are able to find out we have got a wide varieties of their characteristics now that what the technology is used to make them so that we will be having a modifications to prepare them and we will be getting a gaining advantage of using them this is what we are going to see now <clears throat> this is a uh, polymerization is the methodology where we are going to get a polymer i hope uh, you know you understand the concept till now if anybody is having a doubt they can unmute and ask uh, otherwise we will proceed so the methodology which uh, being used for the uh, making of this is a polymerization polymerization is the process of bonding a monomer or a single unit to together Through the variety of reaction mechanisms, so polymer is the process of bonding monomer or the single unit together through the variety of reaction mechanism to form the longer chain named as a polymer. Longer chain, a longer chain named as a polymer. So in this particular case, what the uh, thing is, the monomers are small and the single molecules. There, it is a hydrocarbon or amino acids. it may be uh, uh, nucleic acids in the case of gene, gene or genetic material in the case of protein it is an amino acid these monomers are bonded together to form the polymers it means we have got a small units those units will not have any advantage but by making them covalently bonded these chains whether it is a branched or linear or cross linked we are going to gain a wide varieties and the process by which these monomers are bonded together is called as a polymerization so this polymerization process makes this uh, elongation till the desired length at that time we are having a particular properties so to gain that particular properties we make it and we will uh, stop the polymerization to get a, a desired material we want of a particular molecular size so in order to have the molecular size determination we have already seen in the colloidal properties where we have got uh, depending upon your uh, kinetic and uh, uh, kinetic properties we have seen that the, you can determine the molecular weight of these polymers there we have already discussed but uh, here in this particular one that the technology involved in the polymerization is the two types one is additional addition polymerization so in the addition polymerization the polymer is only uh, product and you don't have any another product along with it it means you are starting with a monomer and you are ending with a polymer so you don't have any uh, by product um, with the uh, within this particular reaction <coughs> sorry so the polymer is only the product and uh, this is containing um, a monomer units covalently bonded till it is a, a required molecular safety size is attained we will be proceeding the polymerization and at that time we will be stopping it and monomer will be separate and polymer polymer is separate so we are going to gain the advantages of different characteristics so this is involving a opening of a double bond which is present uh, in the monomer and uh, the conditions of the reactions uh, like a pressure and the temperature they alter the polymer uh, characteristics and most of the times they will uh, have a changes in their uh, branches and cross linkings that will also having a different properties um, the reaction proceeds by the free radical mechanism here a first chain initiation with a free radical generation so once the free radical is generated each monomer is getting connected by the free radical progression reaction this chain reaction will be keep on going till another free radical is getting attacked and making the process and the terminating step chain terminating step is done so we make the conditions of the high pressure and the oxygen as a initiator of a free radical and uh, the oxygen often it provide the initial uh, free radical and it is peak on taking a chain reaction so Uh, at the time chain terminating step we are making a free radical stop so that it will not progress the reaction further so we will be ending your polymerization you will get a polymer of a definite length and molecular weight the second mechanism is uh, condensation uh, polymerization in the condensation polymerization you have got 
uh, byproducts are obtained in this polymerization process not like a previous one <clears throat> in this particular case you are involving two monomers they have different functional groups like uh, your uh, ester the like uh, linkage the where you have got alkali group and carboxyl group in the case of uh, amides you have got a carboxyl group and amine groups so they have got a different uh, uh, functional groups they involve the elimination of water or another smaller molecule in their e reaction it means you are going to get a, a by product means you are using monomer and you are uh, getting a polymer and by product either another small molecule or a water in the previous case we don't have that this is you need to remember <coughs> in the gpat questions where what type of the polymers and what this uh, one we are going to get um, you will be asked so uh, which type of polymer is formed by the what type of mechanism polymerization that is actually uh, required because of this particular two polymers are getting involved without a, any uses of cleaving up a bond and making a free radical this reaction is actually a condensation of these two and called as a condensation polymer it means we are taking a monomer a and a monomer b and we will be getting a polymer and a small molecule normally it is a water say for example you have got a condensation polymer that is uh, including polyesters that is having a ester linkage in the ester linkage you know that you have got a one monomer containing a carboxylic functional group another monomer is containing hydroxyl functional group both are getting uh, condensed to get a water out and you will be getting an ester so this is actually a polyesters in the polyesters the same mechanism is present it means in the polyethylene we are getting uh, a polymerization like addition in the case of polyester we are going to have a condensation so addition polymerization is present in the case of certain polymers condensation polymerization is presentation certain polymers so depending upon what functional group we are using we need to adopt that the temperature and the pressure and conditions so this is actually very important in the polymer technology to see that our polymer reaction is under the control the second type of one is the polyamides this is getting a wide variety of characteristics where it is having a amide linkage so you are having a carboxylic group in one polymer and amine group in another polymer you are going to get a amide <laughs> and liberating a water this is actually one example is all our proteins are amide linkages only we are having most of the times uh, um, we are having um, uh, Uh, nucleic acids uh, derivatives what we are seeing uh, and these uh, amide linkages containing the uh, amino acids the amino acid contain both carboxylic acid also amine also so one uh, amino acid is uh, getting carboxylic acid reacting with the amine of another carboxylic acid uh, that is another amino acid the chain is keep on increasing to get a longer proteins that is actually uh, we are having uh, uh, available in the nature so that all process is a condensation polymerization so this is uh, what uh, the type of technology which we used for the polymerization and the type of the polymers which are available and uh, what are the uh, classification of the particular polymers which we are generally using in the pharmacy not only that nowadays we are having uh, targeting in the cancer we need to have a targeting to particular uh, organ like uh, in the breast cancer or it is <coughs> um, pancreas cancer in the pancreas or anything we need to use some polymers which will be uh, will not damage our body without uh, having any uh, harmful effect so it means the polymer what we are going to use should have the similarity to our body structure but at the same time they should not be um immediately getting cleaved it will having a delay in their cleavage or degradation to get a prolonged effect so it means uh, the polymer is same as that of our body mechanisms and the structures but they will be they are taking a little bit time to get their cleavage and we can use them in the preparation of our formulations so the type of polymer which we are using generally in this particular and our pharmaceutical sciences is um biodegradable polymers what is biodegradable uh, polymer 
is the polymer which can degrade in the in vivo system it in the body so it means that um, they are having a capacity get uh, degraded and it will be taken out from the body without any problem and it will not cause any harm to us say for example if you are injecting any non biodegradable polymer it cannot be degraded by the uh, body then what will happen the body will be considering it as a foreign foreign means it is an, something extra to my uh, body so then uh, our reticular endothelial system it will attack when they are attacking onto the particular particle or a polymer it will fail to degrade it because it is non biodegradable and uh, so many wbc will attack it and they will get killed because then it is not getting uh, removed because it is not getting removed all the wbc will be attacking and they will get a fuss this fuss formation it will get a, internally it is present it will cause a uh, some problem in the organ function and you need to do the amputation sometimes it is a reason we need to use within the injections and uh, so much for uh, so many our cases the polymer which are biodegradable so this biodegradable nature is very much important to prevent the body rejection by the body <clears throat> otherwise this uh, uh, fighting between this uh, non biodegradable polymer and uh, our uh, uh, wbc it will be taking a big war the winner will be always non biodegradable only because it is in uh, not having a life and it is not having a degradation so it will be present forever and the body is failing to throw it out so we should not use them for other purpose we are using two types of the biodegradable polymer which we can get uh, to be used in our pharmacy is one is a natural origin another one is a synthetic origin sir why you want to use these two categories most of the times uh, if you use the uh, natural biodegradable polymer like uh, jantan gum and gar gum they are obtained from the plant and chitojan and chitin they will be obtained from the animal sources they will be same as that of the uh, uh, structures which are present and they can be cleaved by the hydrologists which are present in our body so we can use them without any problem so the degradation process can be attained within the body we can use it whereas the uh, synthetic polymers which we are uh, using uh, by preparing in the lab we prepare uh, them in the lab which we are having uh, synthesized without having connection to the nature like a polyglycolic acid so we are having uh, these uh, made in the laboratory the glycolic acid or you have got a pyruvate cycle glycolic acid cycles so they are actually bodily process very without any problem our body will cleave them so they can be used in the nanoparticles and drug targeting and making a drug to the particular uh, cancer cell so these polymer we can use them so synthetic biodegradable polymer are preferred most of the times uh, why we are uh, preferring uh, them is the natural biodegradable polymer um, uh, they are having most of the times they will not have any immunogenicity first and their physical chemical properties are more predictable and reproducible you may get the question sir what is this uh, uh, why it is having a more predictability and uh, uh, one uh, and uh, um, uh, reproducibility in the case of uh, natural why it is not having that is the question you may be having in the mind most of the times in the natural uh, polymers you will be having a variations in the seasons like uh, rainy season and uh, uh, winter season their characteristic will be varied and uh, their collection time of collection and the similarly we are getting from the tender plant or it is a old plant and uh, time of the processing and you have got a simultaneous another materials along with them they will be present so yeah, they will not be available in the pure nature and uh, definitely same uh, structure they will, these variations are bound to be present in the natural polymer whereas in the synthetic polymer we can have a similar structure whatever you, you are having and standardization can be done <coughs> and they are uh, they are more predictive most of the times if your plant origin is containing some another uh, contamination that contamination it will make uh, the uh, product uh, may be having a immunogenicity so that is the reason say for example if you are having any animal material you are taking and that may animal material is obtained from the nature only but animal is different from our human body 
um, they will be considered as a foreign to it it may reject so that immunogenicity will be problem will be there sometimes but still we can use them we have got a standardization methods and separation methods by using them we can separate and we can uh, use it for our uh, pharmaceutical purpose and uh, whereas the synthetic polymer like uh, plga what we are using they will be having a wide advantage of uh, gaining reproducibility we make them uh, readily used and uh, they will be thrown out of the body with ease so now uh, this is actually what the cancer of the polymers which we have already learnt and uh, these polymers depending upon our purpose like uh, we are going to use them in our pharmacy by have, having adding some of the uh, uh, additional components say for example you have got a polymer which is having a more cross linking in nature you have got it accidentally you got it that that more cross link or branching you have got a different characteristics and different flexibility you don't have flexibility but they are very tough and hard in nature in those cases what you do you can add as a plasticizer one concept is called plasticizer the plasticizer is not a polymer but they are added to the polymer to give the flexibility so you want to have a bending uh, smooth uh, finish and you want to have a uh, uh, it will not get uh, broken even you are bent <coughs> bending so your polyethylene bag when you are bending it it will not be getting broken so it has got some flexibility because it has got added with some plasticizer that is the reason we don't prefer to use them for the hot objects if you are adding the hot objects what will happen the polythene bag may it may be intact it can withstand say putting the polythene uh, cover say tea or uh, any food uh, which you are bringing it it is harmful reason is it is containing a plasticizer that plasticizer is uh, not a regular one they are carcinogenic so these plasticizers are added to give a flexibility to the polymer but we don't know that we use them for the regular hot preparations in the plastics that plastic is containing a plasticizer entering into the food which is stored hot in them and it is entering into our body and causing a cancer so uh, the, now it is uh, uh, the wave is going on that uh, there is a um, videos are getting viral that we we need to avoid a plastic plastic intrinsically they don't have any problem but if you misuse it by adding in this particular concern of a food by adding and transferring them with the hotness they will be certainly providing a damage so this plasticizer is inevitable the reason is you cannot make a material without having any flexibility and without having a flexibility you cannot make a different shapes so it is making a worthless so we need to add a plasticizer a plasticizer is two type one is the internal plasticizer uh, another one is external plasticizer what is this which is uh, having in the polymerization and the polymer linkage is that when you are adding any external plasticizer your material of polymer is already ready and that material you are taking and adding some concentration of the plasticizer and this plasticizer and material together it will give the flexibility which is sufficient to you so you are going to gain the advantage say for example i am telling you this is leaching out so if you are your packaging if it is leaching out of the container and it is entering into your product it is cause a contamination and it is a contamination is there you cannot use it so external plasticization plasticizer is not good to us in those cases how can we use these plastics because it has got a wide advantage we are going to use them by the internal plasticization in the internal plasticizer you are making a changes in the structure so that you are adding a, a flexibility to the polymer by intrinsically changing the structure of the polymer this research will be done in the uh, polymer technology so that you will be having a changes in the structure and extension of these chain length and making a functional group changes you are going to have a plasticizer by adding a plasticizer effect internally and that will not getting leached out so you will be having a less leachable that is the reason in the plastics which are used for the packaging we are going to test for the toxic test toxic analysis i already told you uh, in the packaging uh, the material of construction the packaging of a, with the plastics and the rubber they have got a reachables even in the glass you have got a leachable mono uh, or divalent ethyl metals they are getting leached out of the glass also 
and plasticizers are getting leached out of the plastics material so they are going to cause the damage to us in the packaging development department when you have got such problems you need to take a particular plastic which we are which we are not having any that such problem then we can, we don't have any problem of carcinogenicity why this carcinogenicity come they will enter into our body they are very stable they are not going out of the body body is fighting it fighting it it want to throw it and it is not able to throw it and it will get a triggering point to make the particular uh, part to grow out and that will be thrown out but that growth which is uncontrolled it will be resulting into a cancer so this is actually what the mechanism which we are having it so in those cases we can make the modification by doing research and development of a new polymer technology so that it is shooting uh, our requirement and it is not having any leachables and the leachable which is having is also not having a toxicity most of the times the color what we add in the polymer is also damaged so most of the times i prefer to use yellow color or pink color or it is a uh, blue color that color will also leach into the product where we are storing it in those cases also we are having the problem of getting the damage not like a regular food colors they they will be having little bit uh, toxicity food colors are very costly we cannot add them uh, but it is having a cost uh, cost um, and it will not be getting present suit to their their at the temperatures so the colors will also be getting leached these are all the things which we are going to have studied a separate uh, b pharmacy person you may be also entering into that particular uh, uh, packaging technology it is now a different field uh, not only formulation manufacture and drug invention we have got vaccines we invention and we have got a new polymers for the packaging also so this is the reason it will provide a complete background to you so you can choose the polymer science and the technology and the packaging department and you can place yourself after b pharma you can get uh, the uh, better uh, interest because of these particular variations you can do the lot of research there to safeguard the interest of the society this is the main uh, purpose of this taking this extra class it is providing uh, insights to all of them uh, those who are willing to go out of the track of regular pharmacy and they want to put themselves in the artworks in the packaging labeling and where they need to do the toxicological studies why this toxicology is appearing in this what are the leachables and how to do that what material i need to select these are all answers you will be going to get after knowing this i hope you understand the concept if you have got any doubts you are most welcome to be asked <clears throat> otherwise we will wind up our uh, session and uh, if you have got anything which you want to make me repeat or you want to have a tough subjects which you want me to do you put it in the whatsapp i will be taking them in the next week if possible